Welcome to Turnbike Sports. I'm Dave Weishaddle, and as always, I'm joined by my producer and co-host, Doug Weishaddle. Doug, if you're a sports better or a fantasy sports player, you must be pulling your hair out given the COVID situation in professional sports right now. Well, you know, it's nothing new anymore. That's the problem. It's 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 almost expected. I mean, it, it just seemed to explode over the last week. I mean, it's over 100 players right now in the NFL. I know a lot of hockey players uh, are, are sitting out now. There are some coaches sitting out. Uh, it, it's just absolutely amazing. And, and, and when you're trying to think of these in terms of sports betting and setting your fantasy lineups, it, it can be quite challenging. And but first off, we hope that everyone's okay and healthy and things like that. So it, it looks like no, it's not a life threatening situation to these athletes, but if you're trying to plan out your sports bets and set your fantasy lineups, it's it's quite challenging. It, it, it's also challenging for the TV networks too. I mean, if you have a game that's canceled because of COVID, I, I'm not seeing you got to change your program. I'm not I, seeing I know anything couple, canceled yet. So. Uh, you know, I saw a couple oh, yeah, of hockey games, ho- hockey games, and basketball games. Yep. I'm, I'm 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 not seeing anything with regard to the NFL being canceled. No, yet, but so. I, I have to admit, last year when the NFL was juggling the schedule and moving the games around with because of COVID, they actually did an extremely good job yep. moving them around, and they found a way. To actually make sure that the each week's games were brought, were gotten in on on time, and you know, I didn't see too much of a uh, disruption in their operations either. Yeah, I'm curious. I mean, if the NFL does have to cancel or reschedule a game, I mean, we're coming down to the end of the season, so it, it, it's really, really be difficult to even attempt to move a game. Here, here's an interesting thought. What happens if COVID hits the Super Bowl teams? I don't know, boy. You you're coming toward the um, the playoffs, and you know, I'm talking Super about Bowl even, and, even when the Super Bowl is set for the what NFL. Happens, yeah, what no, happens if boy, you have a COVID problem I, with the Super Bowl? Boy, that boy, what a that'll mess! Be, that'll be an interesting situation. Very, very interesting. Well, we got a great show coming up for you. We got a beat in the house segment. We got our NFL picks coming up. We have a book report and. I will be interviewing John Collins and Richard Hassan from Supergroup, which also includes Betway. And I I told them this during the interview. I saw Betway one time during a hockey game, and I haven't stopped hearing about Betway. And they're doing amazing things in this country and in Europe and all over the world. And we're going to hear all about Supergroup and Betway when we come back for my interview with John Collins and Richard Hassan. It's been a busy week in sports, so let's take a trip down the turnpike. Today's trip down the turnpike is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using our promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Exit 1. We have another survey to talk about in terms of the sports betting industry. You know, the greatest thing about the sports betting industry are the industries that pop up around it. And it's just the marketing research teams and the organizations and the data analytics of who's doing what and who's betting on who and how are ads affecting people. It's just absolutely amazing. I have never been aware of of this many surveys in <laughs> my know, life. Right, right? I mean, you're, I mean, I see them in politics all the time. Oh, yeah. But in terms of a, of an industry that's pretty much still brand new in this country, mm-hmm. the amount of polling, the amount of statistics, and I'm not talking about the games, I'm have, talking about statistics in terms of people you talk have to. Have you ever been approached by a survey or to take a survey about um, sports betting? 
No, no. But then again, you I know, the, you, you may, uh, depending upon, you know, when you go to some of the online newspapers, you may come across a yeah. one of those surveys that pop up before you can read an article. I, I actually ran across one. I don't know if if it's that kind of survey you're talking about. I, I think I went on the website for, uh, it's called Nesson, New England Sports Network. And before, it, it, it was a pop-up. And they wanted to know, do you sports bet on what sports do you bet on and things like that. So that was that was as close as being approached for a survey as as I have come. That may be one of the more subtle approaches yeah, to doing right. a survey. <laughs> By the way, I didn't fill it out. But this, is, this one is a sports betting brand visibility survey. Okay. Done by the group YouGov. It's a uh, market research and data analytics firm. And this is for North America. They, t- they uh, polled 1,100 people, almost 1,200 people, 1,178 people, who had been exposed to sports betting advertisements within the last month of when they were conducting this research. Okay. 37% recalled DraftKings. Well, that's great for DraftKings. 37% was the highest amount for any one sports book. I'm trying to think of the DraftKings commercial I'm seeing and why it was so popular. I people. remember when they the, the they had multiple people there from the different TV shows doing yeah. the, the betting and all that stuff. Uh, I can't think of any of their names. Now, we, um, who who is the comedian? Who um, there was a whole bunch of well known people. I, I don't know their names, but I've seen them on TV. Yeah, shows you, know, and you recognize them, but yeah. I don't know their names. But so uh, I think that was a DraftKings but anyway, one. DraftKings was first with thirty seven percent. All right, Fanduel had thirty percent. Martin Lawrence. There you go. There it Yeah. I was trying to think, who did I see in that commercial? That's DraftKings, right? You mean Jamie Foxx? No, about Jamie Foxx is Bet MGM. I don't know who Mark Lawrence is with. I, I can't tell you it's DraftKings. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but uh, FanDuel was 30%. Caesar Sportsbook was third. 19% of the people polled remember seeing it. Okay. Then Bet MGM and Barstool came in fourth and fifth. Bet MGM had 16%. Barstool had 10%. I see Bet MGM all over New Jersey. The airwaves, they dominate the airwaves, especially in the morning. It seems I see a lot of bet MGM in the morning. Yeah, this, this, isn't, this was only TV. Okay. Because radio, I hear everybody on the radio. And oh, maybe yeah. Maybe it's because we work in that industry more, you know, a lot. But, uh, yeah, I, it's just one of those uh, situations where I'm, it's kind of interesting that bet MGM, which has one of the higher market shares in the country, is one of the lowest recognized or least recognized, I should say, in terms of the people that were polled here. Interesting, yeah. Uh, they did another poll. They they surveyed 2,200 young respondents, ages between 18 and 23, about sports betting advertisements. Okay. Uh, this is now, they, they actually did it in a certain way where they did the entire country, and then they focused on the ones who were, the people who were in sports betting legalized states. Okay. Uh, 47% out of the 2,200 respondents, couldn't remember seeing any betting advertisement. Okay. But that's all 50. It's very I interesting. Mean, it's only, only half the country has legalized sports betting. Well, also legalized sports betting, there are different age requirements in different states. In New yep. Jersey, it's 21. In some states, it's 18, which I'm shocked about. Well, this takes into account all the states. Okay. When they narrowed it down to just the legalized sports betting states, only 21% couldn't recall seeing any advertisements. They couldn't? They couldn't. Okay. 68% noted seeing at least one advertisement a day. 56% recalled having seen more than one advertisement a day. You know, one of these days, that, that kind of made me think about it. I mean, I'm, I'm constantly seeing, uh, for TV anyway, sports betting uh, advertisements in New Jersey. Because we, we, we have New Jersey channels, we have New York channels, we have Philadelphia channels. And I'm going to make an effort to count the amount of commercials I see in one day because it, it's got to be staggering. Oh, yeah. No, it's just it's, nonstop. It, it's almost nonstop. I mean, I remember one commercial break in a television show I was watching. They had four commercials. The first three in a row mm-hmm. were sports book ads. I kind of remember a couple of years ago what was the downfall in a lot of states for daily fantasy was just the constant advertising. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of worried about I hope sports betting doesn't go down that 
that rabbit hole, just like uh, draft or the uh, daily fantasy. Uh, Funny you should that... say the last number I'm going to throw out from this poll. Okay, fifty four percent think that gambling operators should be careful with their marketing campaigns. Yeah, I know. Well, that's my point. I mean, boy, you know, I, I remember, like I said, a couple of years ago, that was the downfall that made everyone. Like their ears perk up about the daily fantasy industry, and it kind of got them into a little bit of a, tr- a little bit of trouble. But hopefully, they, uh, you know, we have learned from that kind of uh, marketing tactic. Exit two. We've got an esports tournament to talk about today. Yes, the Hard Rock down in Atlantic City is having a uh, a betting event. Which they is having, a uh, eSport contest. They're huh? having the very first sanctioned uh, wagering eSports event. Great, great. Uh, eSports Entertainment Group, who we've had on the show, Grant Johnson, CEO, great guy. Yeah. Oh, no, great. Uh, boy, is he busy, too. Oh, Making the deals and doing this great thing he's down got, in Atlantic City. He's got City. the huge deal with the Hall of Fame Resort yeah, over yeah, in Canton, yeah. Ohio, for the eSports complex there. Um, but they just announced this deal. And uh, it's with the Hard Rock Atlantic City. On January 22nd and 23rd, they're going to be doing a competition they're calling Land Duel. Land Duel. Yes. L-A-N Duel. Yes. Huh? Okay. Um, and uh, it's they're hoping this is going to be the first of many events uh, down in Atlantic City, um, and especially with the Hard Rock. They're hoping there's a more permanent uh-huh. situation coming down the road as a result of this first event. It's been a long time coming. No, too. no, where are they having it in Hard Rock? I've been all over Hard Rock, and I'm trying to think of where they're going to have it. Is it like a concert space? I haven't kind of seen thing? exactly they have a huge where they're going to be doing, area. but I think that may be where they're yeah. doing it because I remember when we went to the grand opening of the Hard Rock, I know. the hall yeah. that we were in. Yeah, that, that was great. That is probably where they're going to be doing it. They had the uh, guitar break. Right. That's what they do for every opening of a hard rock. They have everyone on stage, and they (laughs) they break a guitar. Well, this is going to be a two-day, 256-player in-person tournament, so they're going to need space like that. I would Maybe multiple spaces. I would bet you it's in that room we were in. But this is going to be the first skill-based gaming event approved by the New Jersey Division of Gaming Enforcement. And you're going to be able to wager on the event itself. And also, this is interesting. The participants are going to be able to wager on themselves or any other person in the event. Huh. Okay. That's kind of a weird that's setup a, there. That's, that's interesting. That's a little different than you know normal uh, sports betting uh, aspects of everything. I mean, normally you don't see, you know, that's like saying a football player can bet on himself yeah. on a prop bet or a uh, or his team or whatever. I think uh, somebody by the name of Pete Rose got into that <laughs> yeah, situation, right. but. Uh, it's kind of an interesting setup. It's it's really nice to see that esports is really really starting to take off in terms of having a wagering event. Now I know that Hard Rock has a sports book and a sports betting area. Is is that the only place I'll be able to place a bet on this event, or is it going to be as an far, online? Kind as of far thing, as or? I know, no sports books have announced that they're going to be having the odds for this event yet. I'm sure when it gets closer, you're going to start seeing a lot of the books announce yeah. they're going to be doing this. Um, I would guess Hard Rock would. I mean, you can place a bet at Hard Rock, I would think. I, I would assume you'd be able to place a bet anywhere. All right, yeah. You know, I, it's not a collegiate event, so it's not going to be banned in New Jersey. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things where uh, players competing in the event check in, create their own account, they're assigned a PC, and then they begin. You can't bring your own equipment. Oh, okay. All so right. they're actually going to be able to, you know, control the the uh, the actual hardware that they're I'm, using. I'm going to try and get there because, you know, I have never actually seen a live eSport event, and I'd, I'd love to see it. Well, this is also for the non-eSports participant. They're going to set up a, an entire area for non-tournament participants. You can go and play in a side match. Oh, okay. Yeah. You mean I, if I, if I'm not part of the tournament and I want to try my hand at esports, I can. They're going to have a place. I can. I can have a place that I can actually try it out. Huh? Exactly. Oh wow. Okay. So that's January twenty second and twenty third, Hard Rock Atlantic City. Congratulations, Grant, for getting that up and running. Yeah, it's wow. going to be fun to see. I, I hope it's the first of many. Exit three. Okay, this exit we've you know for some reason over the last couple of weeks has become the 
cryptocurrency blockchain NFT exit. Oh, more. Boy, NFTs are in the news everywhere. We've, we've got two little stories everywhere. here to talk about here. We've got blockchain poker and NFT rugby. Huh. Okay. Uh, we'll start with the blockchain poker. This is from Virtue Gaming. They're, they're trying to introduce the first legal poker player pool nationally using the play-to-earn technology. Okay. Play-to-earn technology is a business model that relies on blockchain technology where whatever you earn playing in these games has some kind of ownership in terms of the blockchain technology underneath it where you can actually unlock other aspects of the game or buy and sell other people's or your own. You know, there's an ownership now uh, attachment to now this technology. We'll, we'll, since it doesn't sound like you're, it's money in and money out, will this be allowed to be played in the U.S.? That is what they're hoping. Okay. So, uh, again, it's... you're dealing with a poker tournament. Mm -hmm. What they're doing here, uh, Virtue Gaming uses... It's almost like a sweepstakes law. I mean, yeah. you know, you, you kind of you, you win the chips, but the chips aren't really worth money. It's just the amount of chips puts you in position to win certain prizes kind right, of thing. Exactly. They're doing a they're peer, finding they're doing they're finding the loophole kind they're, of thing. They're using this model to create a peer to peer online poker site. Okay. Uh, it should be interesting how the regulators treat this. It's going to have cash games with multi token wagering. It's not going to be US dollars. Okay. You're going to be using an Ethereum based blockchain currency hmm. to create this and you're going to be using the tokens to create whatever you want in terms of some kind of asset-based winning okay, as part of this online poker. And it's going to be interstate. It's not going to be one state only. They're hoping to do interstate just like it used to be before Black Friday. Well, look, like if it's, if it's not money in, money out, they may be able to do it. It looks like they might be able to do it. Who knows? Well, it, it's a step in the, uh, the direction of nationalizing online poker. Sure, again. sure. And it may be... Uh, Maybe the way to go. I mean, uh, it seems there's some resistance to a national online poker system in this country again. But mm -hmm. doing it from a blockchain or a cryptocurrency standpoint may be the way to yeah, do it. Yeah. The other uh, NFT story we have here, we have Virtual Sports Exchange, ASX Sports, will be bringing NFT-enabled fantasy gaming to rugby fans. Wow, okay, rugby. I don't know anything about rugby. I know uh, it's very popular. Though. It's very popular. It's fun to watch. I'd say it's really fun to watch. It's fun to watch. I don't know the rules, though. Yeah. I mean, I see the scrum, and I see them kicking the ball Those around. Those guys are crazy, though, man, to, to be playing like that without really any protection. Sometimes you see guys wearing these kind of like these leather helmets. The leatherhead helmets. Yeah. But, you know, other than that, some of these guys have no helmets. There's certainly no body protection whatsoever and these guys are running around hitting each other like you know and they're it, as big as football it's players. like it's like u.s football without the protection which a, is amazing they don't have I, the I, same I, kind of injury I, situation I cannot, that football players have i want i watched a whole rugby match one time and no one got hurt <laughs> yeah. no one got hurt yeah, you don't hear about injuries too much in rugby i i don't know why because they're they're hitting each other without any helmets on and without any padding on it's it's, it's absolutely incredible well asx sports has signed a long-term agreement with sky new zealand's global digital rugby platform rugby pass rugby pass rugby pass will be supplying data to asx so that the nfts that they're going to be selling will be able to be gamified into a fantasy sports platform for the rugby industry. Great. So uh, they have an audience already of over 10 million uh, people. Rugby's rugby popular. Pass. Rugby pass. Especially in Europe. Rugby's popular. Rugby's in huge. Exit four. Last but not least, we have Vegas in the news again in terms of the NFL. Oh, lots of things are happening with Vegas and the NFL. It's amazing how the NFL has quickly changed its tune in terms <laughs> of, you know, we don't want gambling involved, but where are we going to put the Super Bowl? We're going to put the Super Bowl in the home of gambling, Las Vegas. Well, look, I mean, the one thing Las Vegas has that the Super Bowl needs is lots of hotel rooms in a reasonable distance from the stadium, and, and Vegas is just made for that. Well, this is one aspect where Vegas is very happy of the expanded NFL schedule because the extra week in the NFL schedule pushed the Super Bowl back 
to Mardi Gras. Oh, okay. So they couldn't have it in New Orleans, which it was originally planned to do. Oh, okay. So they they had to get it out because of the Mardi Gras celebrations, because you, you, there's too many too many people. In terms so what, of wait, 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 what year are everything. we talking about the Super Bowl? This in is Vegas? 2024. 2024. Okay. This will be Super Bowl 58. You know, they might have some problems with regard to New Orleans going forward now. You know, it's, uh, well, Mardi Gras is, is it kind of the same time every year? Is it, it will it hit the Super Bowl time every year? Well, or? we'll find out because not only was New Orleans bumped out of 2024, they are now being given it, they given the Super Bowl for 2025. So I, I guess they made all the computations. They, they will, looked they at the have, calendars and they said it's not going to con- conflict with Mardi Gras. There huh? must be something in okay. terms of the uh, Mardi Gras calendar that puts it in a different week. Well, the next Mar- year Mardi Gras is Ash Wednesday. It, it's Ash Wednesday, and that's based on Easter. And Easter is based on the cycle of the moon. For some, I, it's I, the I don't first know Sunday the technical after a full moon. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it it kind of, it, it, you know, I'm I'm surprised we're still uh, doing, <laughs> doing holidays yeah. like that. But you know, but it's uh, it all depends on the ce- celestial calendar. Well, this this news was approved at the owners' meetings that are being held in Dallas uh, last week. Okay, uh, and it's not actually kind of uh, the first time Vegas has been gotten has gotten involved with the NFL here. I mean, you got the Raiders there with Legion Stadium, which is where the Super Bowl is going to be held. Uh, Las Vegas is also going to be hosting next year's NFL draft. Okay, that'll be fun to see. Well, they were supposed to host it. The year of the pandemic. 2020. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And uh, from what I understand, the plans for the Vegas draft was very expansive of the strip. You know, it was going to be... It was gonna oh, it be, looked amazing. I, I yeah. saw the uh, how they were going to do the stage and things like that, and then all of a sudden, COVID hit and you couldn't do it. Well, they're going to have the draft for this upcoming draft here. Okay. Uh, they also are going to be hosting the 2022 Pro Bowl. Hmm. I wonder if people are going to skip out on that one. Ah, boy, I got to tell you, I, I, when I was a kid, I used to love the Pro Bowl. But now, you know, when we did the when they did the Pro Bowl when I was a kid, it was before the Super Bowl. Or no, wait, no, it was after the Super it was the Bowl. Week after the it was Super the, Bowl, it was after the Super Bowl because you know the players that played in the Super Bowl played in the Pro Bowl, and that was great. But now, no one plays in the Pro Bowl anymore. I think they play one time just to say they did it, and now they don't play Well, I wonder if Hawaii had anything to do with it, too. Yeah, yeah, it used to be held in Hawaii all the time. Well, I'm talking about with the Pro Bowl before the Super Bowl. I mean, now now with Vegas getting the Pro Bowl, the Super Bowl that year is also held on the West Coast. Okay. Uh, Because the Super Bowl now for the next three years – uh, you're going to have SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles is this year's Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. State Farm Stadium in Arizona is going to host the 2023 Super Bowl, and Vegas gets to 2024. And the Pro Bowl is at 2022, which is kind of close to SoFi Stadium. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I don't know. Well, exactly. look, you got good weather and things like that. There, there's no excuse weather. now if people don't want. You know, I mean, it's kind of. <laughs> you know, there's no travel really involved. Yeah. Well. If you think about, it, especially the Super Bowl teams, if they may you may see some of the Super Bowl people play. And today's trip down the turnpike was brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using our promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. And as always, you can get in touch with Turnpike Sports by calling or texting us at 609-512-5910. That's 609-512-5910. At Turnpike Sports is the show's handle on Facebook and Twitter. At Turnpike Sports Radio is our handle on Instagram. And as always, our email address is info at turnpikesportsradio.com. And don't forget, you can listen to the show via Spotify, Amazon Music, iTunes, Radio.com mobile app, as well as uh, Stitcher and YouTube. You can also watch us on your smart TV, Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV. Head on over to turnpikesports.net. You'll be able to watch our video channel there. 
Well, we got a great show coming up for you. We got a beat in the house segment. We got our week 15. Is it week 15 NFL? Week 16, week 16 NFL picks. Week 16. Unbelievable. Then we got a book report. What? Were you going to say something? Though, yeah, or? it's just going too fast. <laughs> I know. I'm just shaking my head. This, you know, this, it, this whole thing, this whole NFL season's a blur. But our Week 16 NFL picks, we're going to have a book report. But coming up right after this, I'm talking with John Collins and Richard Hassan from Supergroup and especially Betway. Betway, you see it all over the place. It's such an amazing, an amazing sports book. You know, you can. It's um, an amazing company. It's it. It absolutely is. It's huge in Europe. It's growing here, and we're going to find all about it when I coming up right after this. When I talk with John Collins and Richard Hassan from Supergroup, stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. <laughs> Now, we can shop privately for adult products at adamandeve.com. They've got massage oils, lingerie, and lots more we can't mention here. Use offer code SPICE404. They'll give you 50% off almost any one item, three free DVDs, free mystery gift, and free shipping. That's 50% off, free shipping, and more. Private shopping starts at adamandeve.com. Today's trip down the turnpike is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Welcome back to Turnpike Sports. I am Dave Weishaddle. One of the most interesting aspects of the sports betting and gambling industry is the incredible people that come together and create something special. And in my opinion, one of the most special creations that has emerged in the gaming business is an organization called Supergroup. We're going to find out all about Supergroup because on the line we have John Collins, the CEO of Sports Entertainment Acquisition Group, and Richard Hassan, the president and COO of Supergroup. John and Richard, thank you so much for coming on. Hey, Dave. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. Good uh, to be here. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. But before we start talking about Supergroup, <laughs> I want to ask you both about your backgrounds because the experience you have in the gaming and sports industry is absolutely incredible. Richard, I want to start with you. How did you become involved in sports and the gaming industry, and what led you to Supergroup? Thanks, Dave. Uh, so I'm originally uh, from South Africa. Uh, in South Africa, I qualified as a chartered accountant. I then moved over to the UK, uh, where I went to grad school, after which I spent a few years at Goldman Sachs in London in the investment banking division. That was my first exposure uh, to the online sports betting and gaming industry. And after a few years there, uh, I joined um, a company in the UK, Wind Technologies, uh, which today is, is part of the supergroup. And I've been there for just shy of 10 years. John, you also have an incredible business background. For our listeners, what is the Sports Entertainment Acquisition Group, and what led you to the gaming industry, and in particular to combine your organization with Supergroup? Sure. Well, uh, so the, uh, my partner in, in uh, Sports Entertainment Acquisition Group is uh, Eric Grubman, and Eric has a has a similar but but a little different background than me. Eric, Eric really started, you know, he's a nuclear submarine engineer. He wow. went to Naval Academy. He went to Goldman Sachs, did M&A for a long time, was a partner there. And then he came into the sports business really through Goldman Sachs. He started the sports business there. I think selling uh, the first deal was really selling the New England Patriots wow. uh, to the Kraft family. Um I, we cross paths. I have 25 years. I have 15 years, you know, with the NFL, a couple tours of duty, really at the league office, sitting at the 
you know, at the, at the tip of the spear in terms of, you know, marketing and sales and, and programming. Uh, I have uh, a couple of years as the president and CEO of the Cleveland Browns, and then I came back to New York and was the chief operating officer for uh, the National Hockey League for, for nine years. But Eric and I, you know, knew each other, and then we kind of crossed over in a private equity-backed startup that was called On Location Experiences, which had spun out of the NFL. It was an experiential event business, mostly focused on the Super Bowl. And we spent four years building that up from, you know, 16 million of revenue to 700 million of, of revenue in, in three years and ultimately sold the company to Endeavor. And after that, you know, I was very happy to sort of <laughs> spend a little time with the family <laughs> and maybe relax a little bit after uh, kind of a long, uh, pretty intense career. And uh, Eric just wanted to keep going. So he had this first idea about raising money through a SPAC, mm -hmm. um, which I had never really heard about. Uh, I, I warmed to the idea, you know, back in October last year, uh, we raised uh, $450 million uh, through investors. Uh, and mostly, you know, we talked about our experience in the sports and entertainment sector uh, we talked about the kinds of companies that, you know, might be of interest to us in that sector. Um, but we never, you know, and, and, and coming from the NFL and, and, and the NHL, frankly, you know, there have been a lot of innovations, particularly on the media side. But one of the innovations that I think people have been talking about, you know, really for 20 years, I know, I know for me, it started when David Hill, you know, first came over to the NFL through Fox when Fox got the broadcast rights. And we were kicking around kind of their vision for how to present the game and how it was going to be different. And he kept referring to, uh, you know, his experience in, in Australia and then Europe and how much further ahead of the game those countries, you know, sports were in terms of really beginning to tap into gaming and what it could be. And so I, you know, my, my career is basically for 25 years, I've been, you know, fantasizing about getting involved in the, in the sports, sports betting and, and, and gaming industry. And little did I know that, you know, we were going to partner with, you know, Neil and Richard, who frankly are, you know, two of the pioneers, right. And their teams are really two of the pioneers of all our gaming industry. So things come full circle and, uh, you know, Richard's going to t take you through Supergroup, but it's a phenomenal company. We're really excited about it. It, it certainly sounds like it. And I got to tell you, living in New Jersey, I am constantly bombarded with information on sports betting and gaming companies. And I got to tell you, one of the most impressive companies I've learned about is your Supergroup. For people out there who may not be familiar with Supergroup, Richard, could you tell us uh, something about Supergroup? Sure, man. Uh, absolutely. So Supergroup, we're a global uh, online sports betting and gaming business. Uh, our, our vision is to provide first-class entertainment to the worldwide betting and gaming community. And we do that uh, with two offerings. We have Betway, our single brand global sports betting brand, and Spin, which is a multi-brand online casino offering. Uh, the business today, we are truly global. We have a really global footprint. We hold licenses in 25 different jurisdictions, uh, and that's outside of the U.S., which I'm sure we'll touch on a bit later. Uh, our, our teams, as, as John pointed out, uh, incredible teams, you know, just shy of 4,000 people spread across the world. Uh, today, offering products in 26 different languages uh, around the world. Uh, and as you would imagine, you know, operating 24-7, 365, uh, in all these languages, uh, in all these countries, uh, and, and really providing our customers across the world with, with leading uh, entertainment in both betting and games. John, for me, the, reading the business model for Supergroup, it, it is so unique because of the combination of businesses that fall under the umbrella of Supergroup. In, in your opinion, how are you different from the other companies out there in the market? Yeah, it's a, it, it, that's really a great question, Dave. I mean, because that, that is the thing. I mean, when, when we came back, when we had first met 
you know, Neil and Richard through a uh, mutual uh, acquaintance of Eric's, frankly, uh, a banker in, in London, Daniel Burns, who's very active in this space. Um, it, you know, no one could quite believe that there was a company that, you know, was this big and this mm-hmm. profitable um, that was kind of in the sector. Nobody had really heard of them. And Richard will give you kind of the backstory on that. But I totally agree. We think that they are very uniquely positioned in the gaming universe. I, I think there's a couple of points. One, I think, is this worldwide reach and scale, which Richard had talked about. It's not easily replicable, and it's really hard to do. So, you know, incredible respect for you know and Richard in terms of being operators and, and really uh, you know building you know businesses in 25 different jurisdictions, 26 languages. Um, it, it's imp- it, it's incredible. They have the dual offering, as Richard said, you know, of both uh, the high growth uh, single sports brand, you know, Betway yeah. uh, with the really cash generative spin casino group. They're online only. They got no bricks and mortar. Uh, you know, they, they really I know everybody in the space, you know, has a data and a technology story. But I think when you really dig in a little bit with uh, with Richard and the team on Supergroup, you see that, you know, they've been. They've been in the business for 20 plus years and they really do care about the customer journey and it's reflected in the way they build their programs and the way that they, uh, uh, they lean on sort of the data science and the technology. And then I think a big differentiating factor is, you know, the high growth and highly profitable. I mean, they're, you know, when we started this journey, it was kind of early in the year. We're now towards the end of the year. And, you know, they're, they're going to do $350 million of, of EBITDA this year. Um, so it's a, it's a great story. It's the rare mix of, of growth and a value stock. And uh, we're just excited to uh, through the process uh, and, and get these guys uh, a public listing on the New York Stock Exchange. Because I think that they're very, very uniquely positioned there. They're, they're, there's really no other uh, publicly listed stock in this sector that, that looks, you know, like super group. Mm-hmm. Richard, John just mentioned Betway, and I want to ask about that. I mean, over the last year, I've been hearing more and more about it. I think the first time I saw the word Betway was I was watching a hockey game, and I saw it on the, I think it was the boards or something, and I was wondering, what the heck is Betway? And I haven't stopped hearing about it since. Uh, Richard, can you tell us something about the origins of Betway? Sure. So actually, Betway is a business that we acquired uh, back in 2011, uh, and they were using the same uh, PAM, the same player account management system that we were, um, and that was our first introduction in, in, into sports betting. Um, the business, actually, the Super Group has its origins in uh, on the online gaming side yeah, for, for more than two decades. And sports, we've been involved now for, for around around one decade, around around ten years. Um, the Betway brand today, you know, as, as John and I mentioned earlier, it's a truly global brand. And, and you're right, uh, you you did see it in in uh, in the NHL game. You know, we had a, a we have a partnership uh, for the Stanley Cup. We also have uh, partnerships with Betway today with uh, the New York Islanders, the LA Kings, uh, the Philadelphia Flyers. And of course, many other sports. Today, Betway has brand partnerships with over 65 teams and leagues uh, around the world. And that's going back to what we spoke about earlier, being the, the global nature of the brand. And when you look at the brand, one additional thing to add was to what John said earlier about how unique we are. We're operating one single brand across all these markets, across all these countries. Mm-hmm. So. For example, in the NBA, we have uh, Betway branding seven teams in their home game. And that's not just for one specific market, but that's a focus on the global audience. It's where the NBA is being viewed across the world. You'll see the Betway branding. Um, In the UK, as an example, uh, we're on the front of the shirts of West Ham United, uh, the the English Premier League soccer team. uh, And also we have... Betway partnerships on the brand in, in five other European countries. You know, so the brand really has these partnerships across numerous different uh, teams and leagues, across numerous different uh, sports and countries, uh, really coming back to the fact that it's a single brand 
uh, across the whole world. Of course, within uh, Betway, uh, like I said earlier, we're operating in, in, in numerous different uh, different markets. Uh, and and the, while it's a sports bet offering, within the Betway offering, uh, we have both sports betting and, and gaming. Richard, I want to stick with you. I mean, you mentioned the uh, European soccer partnerships, and I, I read about them, and they just seemed incredible. Can you talk about that deal with European soccer? Because I, it is very impressive what Betway has done with regard with uh, European soccer. Sure, absolutely. So I think I'll, I'll start with the, with the English Premier League. Uh, I think that, that's a league with the highest global viewing figures. Uh, where, where Betway is, is a very, very visible brand. Uh, just to give you a, a statistic there, you know, Betway branding is, is visible in over 250 of the 380 matches that are played in the English Premier League. So it's around you know, north of 65% of games in the Premier League uh, have got Betway branding. And then in addition to that, uh, on, on the European front, uh, we have Betway presence in, in, in five other European countries. So, uh, or, or sorry, in, including England, uh, uh, five. So it's England, Spain, Italy, Germany, uh, and, and Portugal, uh, with, with more to come. And I think this is going uh, back to the point where it, it, it's not just doing sponsorship or having these brand partnerships for one country, but it's how we appeal uh, to the global audience uh, our customers are watching different sports in different countries, and, and it's taking this global brand and then localizing it within each of the markets uh, that, that that we're operating in. Also, of course, uh, I'm not sure if you watched Ted Lasso, but that was uh, where you, you may have seen some some very strong brand partnerships. Yes. Uh, sorry, some some, <laughs> some very strong branding. Actually, John, I'm not sure if you want to continue from there. Yeah, no, I, I I just think, you know, the Ted Lasso was kind of like a fun bonus mm-hmm. to the idea that, you know, these guys have built a really authentic, you know, global sports brand. So it, you know, Apple's number one streaming TV, you know, series of the year prominently features Betway, not because some marketing guy, you know, figured out a way to get to a sponsorship, but because, you know, it kind of centers around this English Premier League team that, that way happens to sponsor in West Ham. So, you know, I, I think the U.S., you know, Dave, you, you mentioned you're seeing it everywhere now yeah. on, you know, in the NHL and the NBA and obviously, you know, tennis events and horse racing and all over the place. But a lot of the, um, the benefit of some of their global sponsorships is the fact that they do, you know, the Premier League is probably, I've heard Richard quote this a couple of times is in many respects is number one filed sport in, in many of the African countries. And so the Betway brand without a whole lot of marketing spend is at the very top of the list in terms of, um, you know, sports betting brands there just by nature of their premier league sponsorship. Similarly, you know, Betway does, you know, Richard has led kind of their, uh, you know, the penetration into the U S market. Yeah including with a bunch of NBA teams. But he also goes on to say, look, even if that way wasn't coming to the U.S., they would probably be doing these team sponsorships because, you know, the NBA is in their top three global sports betting uh, categories uh, throughout Europe. So it's a, it's a very unique um, position that they've been able to put themselves in. Uh, it, 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 it clearly builds you know this authentic global brand but it also is a you know big competitive advantage because you know as they get into these markets uh and as they compete for you know some of the sponsorships that they really value they're able to amortize it around the world yeah, where, yeah. whereas if you're a say for example only a u.s operator you're limited in terms of you know how much you can load up your marketing costs John, you, you, you rose, you brought up a really great point. I mean, I, I was thinking about that when, how much different is marketing to the European market than it is to the U.S. customer? I mean, like I said, I'm a guy sitting in New Jersey looking at a hockey game. I say, hey, what's Betway? And it really stuck with me. I mean, is the reaction the same way for the European markets as it is in the U.S. markets? Yeah, Richard, since I've spent my life, 
you know, marketing to uh, mostly predominantly U.S. and North American uh, sports fans. Maybe maybe you're you're a better expert on that one. Yeah, sure. I think, um, Dave. I think you know when you look at the Betway brand, like I said earlier, we look at it as as a global audience. Yeah, you know, we're not tied to any one specific market or one or one specific region. Um, and, and I think when you look at how the the types of leagues and teams that the brand is partnered with uh, across all these markets, you know, it, it's building this global brand, uh, but then ensuring that we have these local partnerships and, and, and appealing to our customers in all countries and, and, and in any country uh, that we're operating in. Uh, one, I guess, recent anecdote which might um, put a bit of color to this is we were awarded a license uh, about two months back uh, in an Eastern European country and the most watched sport in that country uh, is German football where we already have a number of Betway brand partnerships. And that's going back to the point that John was uh, mentioning earlier, where you know when we go live with the Betway brand in a certain market, um, potential customers and future customers are already aware of the Betway brand because of these partnerships. And, and I guess that's something similar uh, to when you saw Bet on the Ice. So you know, provided we, we have this large portfolio which we do, I mentioned, it's north of 65 different partnerships around the world uh, for the brand. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're, we're appealing to our customers um, uh, across the world. You know, another global sport that Betway made a lot of deals with is the uh, sport of tennis, which is a very popular sport for people to bet on. I, uh, people love to bet on tennis. In the world of tennis, what deals have you made in the past and what deals in the tennis world can we expect from Betway in the future, Richard? Sure. So today we have uh, 11 tennis partnerships uh, across eight different countries. Um, I, I won't go through the full list, but uh, you know, just to name a few, you've got the Miami Open, uh, the Madrid Open, uh, the Stockholm Open, uh, and those across, like I said, uh, those 11 partnerships across these eight different countries. Um, and it's going back to, to the previous point, you know, it's not, again, it's not just one sport that Betway has its partnerships with. It's a range of sports of which, yeah. you know, tennis is, say, 11 of these 65 plus different partnerships. Uh, and, and as we continue to explore more sports, you know, perhaps uh, we'll have more tennis and perhaps we'll have uh, additional other sports. You know, I, I brought it up a couple of times, and uh, I first noticed Betway watching a hockey game. And you recently made news in my home state of New Jersey when you made a deal with the New Jersey Devils, and you also made a deal with the Philadelphia Flyers. Can you tell us something about those deals, and what are your plans for the future deals in hockey? So, yeah, I think it's sticking to a similar theme. Uh, what, what John mentioned earlier, a lot of the, the type of brand partnerships that we may do uh, – in the U.S., even if the brand wasn't live in the U.S., we would still go ahead uh, with these partnerships. And again, that's going back to the global audience. Uh, if you take the Philadelphia Flyers as an example, uh, the Betway brand uh, via Digital Gaming Corporation is, is live there today um, in, in, in Pennsylvania uh, with the sports betting and gaming offering. So there, you know, it, it's a combination uh, of appealing to the global audience uh, but then also having some some local resonance for for customers that are in state uh, and that see the brand um, w w within the state. Now, John, you mentioned recently Supergroup filed paperwork to become a publicly traded uh, company on the New York Stock Exchange. Why do you think it was an important step to take at this time? And do you think that more and more gaming companies and organizations will try to go public in the future? I think. Um... You know, I, I'll just kind of parrot some of some of the we, look from Eric and, and my standpoint. Um, we were, you know, we think they're going to be a great public company. As I said, you know, they're they're in a real high growth area, uh, gaming as well as online sports betting. They're digital only. They have no brick and mortar. They have no debt on the balance sheet. So. They're very uniquely positioned, and they're also incredible operators. They're very disciplined, but highly aggressive in terms of how they roll out. And I do think that they have a real differentiated model, particularly in the sports betting area with, 
you know, with the, the single brand that way. But, you know, I, what, what I've heard, uh, you know, Neil and Richard um, talk about, you know, from their perspective was just, you know, people getting to know who they are. And, and you know, when they're opening up so many markets around the world, uh, it's nice to be able to point to, you know, a, a public listing on the New York Stock Exchange and all the, the diligence and accounting that has to go into something like that. You don't have to spend a whole lot of time convincing people that your business is real. Um, you know, it's all publicly, the, the information is really publicly available. Mm-hmm. And I think in, in terms of the benefit of, of the SPAC partnership, um, you know, back in April, I can tell you when, when we announced the deal and we first started to meet with uh, potential investors, you know, who were maybe less interested in a SPAC investment as a sector and more interested in the gaming sector. There was, you know, there was some uh, uh, doubt that, you know, the company really could be as big and as profitable as they were because, frankly, they hadn't, you know, they hadn't seen them or hadn't run into them before, which, you know, Richard can talk about. But I think as we've gone through the process of getting, you know, through the SEC and getting through, you know, full year audits and ultimately now hopefully uh, very close to becoming a, a, a public company, we've seen uh, people's attitudes about, you know, what what they think is going to work long term in this sector. And, you know, they've seen the real value in somebody like Supergroup that has built out this incredible operating scale on a global basis um, that, you know, as I said before, is really hard to replicate. Mm-hmm. So really uniquely positions them in the marketplace. Since, since we met Eric and John uh, way back, um, yeah, it, it really has felt like a genuine partnership. We've been working as one team and obviously as we move towards the next phase of uh, becoming a listed business uh, from the super group side, we, we're really excited. Uh, and both John and Eric, um, are sticking around. Uh, Eric's going to be the chairman of the listed business, John, as a, as a non-exec director. Um, and, you know, if, if the last many months of working together is, is anything to go by, uh, then, you know, we, we think there's a, a great future ahead. Now, being a gaming attorney and doing the show, I get to talk to a lot of sports book operators, and it's very interesting to hear their plans on how they want to expand their business. I mean, some say they want to go to a jurisdiction that doesn't have a lot of books so they can make their name. Other operators say they want to go to a market that has a lot of books because they think they can find their place in a busy market. My feeling is, hey, why can't you do both? But in terms of expansion into different jurisdictions, both in this country and worldwide, what is Supergroup and Betway's plan on moving forward? R- Richard, uh, why don't you take that one? Sure, Dave. So, so as you mentioned earlier, today we have a truly global footprint. Mm-hmm. We have these 20, 25 licenses outside the U.S. Uh, and today, by Digital Gaming Corporation, the brand is live in uh, five states uh, in, in the U.S. Uh, when we look at new markets, for us, we're looking at, at many markets at any point in time, at any one at any one point in time, uh, and as you point out, those markets could be uh, in the U.S. They could be in, in any other part of the world. And because of the scale that we're operating at, when we look at a new market, we, we're looking effectively for incremental revenue from these markets. You know, we're not the first, second, third biggest in any one market around the world, and we don't need to be in those positions in order for a specific market to make sense for us. You know, within the business, like I said, we've got close on 4,000 people. Uh, we have been replicating the, the success for many years of entering markets and scaling in those markets. And as we look at new markets, we're effectively finding ways to add on this incremental revenue on top of our existing base. You know, this year going to be north of one and a half billion dollars wow. of net gaming revenue. So when we look at a market, Provided it makes commercial sense and is commercially viable from a uh, tax rate perspective and from a regulatory perspective, you know, we don't have to go into a market and spend hundreds of millions of dollars on marketing, as an example, or end up with 
25 or 35 percent market share in order for that market to make sense. We also don't have to go out and hire hundreds of additional people to operate that market. You know, we have teams, we will go and hire uh, in state or in country teams that will localize uh, the product, they'll localize the marketing, they'll understand the local customers. And for us, this is all incremental revenue that we're adding on top of our existing base coming from this global footprint. Where, when we look at a market, we'll look at you know, how do we get to the first $500,000 of net gaming revenue? How do we get to the first million, two million, five million? Uh, it, it's not a matter of we, we must get to hundreds of millions of revenue in order for the market to make sense. So, so and that's how we leverage our global footprint. Uh, and that's how we'll continue to look uh, to expand the global footprint even more. John, I've been amazed at how quickly sports betting has expanded in the United States. I mean, it's grown at an incredible rate. Do you think that the expansion of sports betting in the United States will continue to grow at this rate, or at some point something has to slow down? No, I think I think it's still really early days. Mm-hmm. I mean, I you know maybe it's the uh, first inning or the top of the second inning. It's it's really early days. I mean, and and that's one of the things I love about the way Richard has approached. You know, just say for example, the U.S. I mean, you're, you're talking about not even half the country is is legally able to to vote. Fine. So. I think that um, it's early days. I think uh, as the market in the West becomes even more penetrated, um, you'll see much more integration into the games and, and the live game coverage. Um, that's something else that you know Neil and Richard have a lot of experience with because they've been doing this for 20, 20 years all around the, the globe, and so they've seen you know they've seen this movie before a couple of times, um, but but very bullish and optimistic both for you know high gaming as well as online sports betting richard whenever i ask about the growth in sports betting in the and in the industry as a whole a lot of people reply with one word and that is esports what are supergroups and betways plans with regard to esports and do you see that as a growing market in the sports betting industry uh, absolutely dave uh, we've been focused on the esports uh, within betway for, for the last few years uh, and are very proud of the product that we have uh, today uh, across numerous different markets. Um, is it a growth area? Uh, absolutely. And, and I guess going back to your earlier question around the uh, brand partnerships, you know, part of that portfolio of brand partnerships includes uh, teams and tournaments uh, within the world of esports. Richard, John, where do you see Supergroup and Betway in the coming year. What can consumers expect from Supergroup in the near future? Richard, we'll start with you. Sure, Dave. Um, look, I think uh, as, as a business, we, we, we have this, this global footprint. We will continue to expand uh, organically. Uh, we, we will look at other potential growth opportunities uh, around the world. Uh, to your point on the U.S., uh, as, as the U.S., uh, more states regulate. I think you'll see the brand active in more states there, plus, of course, uh, in other countries around the world. So uh, a, a lot more growth still to come. Uh, John's point earlier, it, it, it's still early days for the business. Uh, we're very excited about uh, becoming a, a listed business uh, and then continuing our story from there. John, what's your opinion? Where do you see Supergroup and Betway in the coming year? Yeah, I think it's an exciting future. I mean, obviously, we're hopeful that uh, we'll get through this transaction and Supergroup will be publicly listed, perhaps, you know, by the end of this calendar year, if not uh, certainly the beginning of January. I think once that happens, you know, they have a new tool in, in their uh, toolkit, right? They're, they've got the public market currency. And this is an industry that is going to, there's going to be a lot of activity, right? There's going to be a lot a lot of growth and a lot of changes, uh, certainly a lot, probably a lot of consolidation in the marketplace. And so Supergroup will be, you know, with their, their global operating scale, with the level of profitability, with their proprietary data and, and technology, they're, they're going to be in a really, really powerful seat to kind of help determine what, what this sector looks like in the next, you know, 10 to 20 years. So very exciting times. 
Richard, we're running out of time, but for people who are interested in Supergroup, what is the website people can go and check out and get more information on Supergroup? Uh, thanks, David. Uh, www.sghc.com. SGHC.com. Richard Hassan and John Collins from Supergroup, thank you so much for coming on and telling us all about Betway Spin and the incredible things Supergroup is doing in the sports betting industry. Certainly people are going to hear more and more about this incredible organization in the future, so please come back on and keep us updated on what's going on with Supergroup. Thank you so much for taking the time with us. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, Deb. Stick around. More Turnpike Sports right after this. privately for adult products at adamandeve.com. They've got massage oils, lingerie, and lots more we can't mention here. Use offer code SPICE404. They'll give you 50% off almost any one item, three free DVDs, free mystery gift, and free shipping. That's 50% off, free shipping, and more. Private shopping stores. It's a casino. People gotta win sometimes. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a giant, colorful check to deposit. Bean the House is brought to you by BetMGM Casino. Play your favorite casino games at BetMGM Online Casino. Slots, table games, live dealer games, everything you love about Atlantic City and Vegas, all online at BetMGM. Don't wait. Join in the fun now. Go to BetMGM Casino, create an account using our promo code TURNPIKE, and become a verified player. New players get $25 free when signing up, plus a first deposit bonus up to $1,000. That's promo code TURNPIKE at BetMGM.com for a 100% deposit match up to $1,000 plus $25 free. Grab a lion's share of the fun at BetMGM.com. Must be 21 years or older to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And welcome to this week's Beat in the House segment where we're going to be talking about the uh, slot machines, the casino wins, the bingo. Uh, we've even got a sports book win yeah, to, right. to talk about. We're we've going to talk a, about a bingo win? We've got a couple bad beat jackpots to talk oh, about this okay. time, too. So uh, we're going to start right off in New Jersey with Caesar Sportsbook. Oh, I know what you're talking about. This is all over the news. I actually am amazed at this one. Uh, I Every so often I do throw in a sports bet in because it's such a unique parlay. And this is a very unique parlay. It's an incredible in parlay. Of, in terms of not just the different sports, but also uh, the number of legs. Well, let me tell you something. Did, did Caesars post all the games involved in this parlay? Did they post all the legs in there? I have it right here. Oh, okay. Did they, like, they I cannot go it? through all of that because it's a 25-leg parlay. $25 bet, 20, 25 leg parlay. Unbelievable. It's a combination of NCAA and pro sports. Um, and it looks like it's a combination of, of money line and spreads. It's 10 spread bets, Unbelievable. 14 money line bets. You know, usually when you get like that kind of a big parlay, it's all like money line or something like that. But no, this is a combination. No, this, this, this was a – and there's no teasers involved. You know, a lot of people were asking, you know, how did he this this guy structure it differently or whatever. And again, twenty five leg is kind of unusual because a lot of sports books do not allow twenty five legs. Yeah, no, it's absolutely amazing. Some I mean, some of them cap them at twenty. Yeah, and it was a twenty five dollar bet too. Yeah, 
Uh, you know, I wonder if he had actually bet more. So how how much did he actually win? The twenty five leg. 25, you know, we're saying he is it a he? It's a he. It's a he. Okay. The twenty five leg, twenty five dollar bet parlay won two hundred and thirty seven thousand five hundred and fifty three dollars <laughs> and eleven cents. Wow, that is a big old congratulations to the player at Caesar Sportsbook in New Jersey. I like they topped it off with eleven cents. Well, the eleven cents yeah, makes the, the difference. The eleven here. cents. That, that's that's the key. The eleven cents there. Um, going over from the sports books to the poker rooms. All right. We have a bad beat jackpot at the MGM Grand Detroit. Now, do I have to tell you where the MGM Grand, Grand Detroit is located? It's Detroit. Exactly. I would guess. I don't have to say Detroit, Michigan. After that no. one, uh, a record bad beat jackpot was hit at the MGM Grand Detroit. Wow. Man from Clinton Township. Dealt quad eights only to lose to quad queens. Wow. Oh, wow. And, and according to the press release, the extremely rare No Limit Hold'em hand triggered a progressive jackpot, which over the last two years, no one's won this for two years now, the jackpot was $800,954. Wow. 40% went to the losing player, 320000 That's the guy with the quad eights, right. right? He was the loser. Such a loser. Yeah, guy. right. Yeah. Three hundred twenty thousand. Twenty percent went to the winning player, one hundred sixty thousand, and the remaining forty percent, the uh, whatever was left over there, eighty thousand dollars each to the other four players at the table. Eighty thousand each, yeah. huh? Oh wow. Okay. I have to admit, if you're going to be part of a bad beat jackpot, yeah, boy, you're just sitting there, huh? You, you got to hope for the least number of players at your table. Yeah, boy, because that increases your share. Uh, but according to MGM Grand, uh, MGM Grand Detroit officials, this was the biggest bad beat jackpot in the casino's history. Casino's been around since 1999. Wow. It's also one, one of the largest in the United States history for bad beat jackpots. In 2018, Motor City Casino Hotel set the U.S. record, paying out a $1.068 million bad beat jackpot. Wow, some about Michigan with the bad beat jackpots, huh? Well, you know, it, it's 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 kind of interesting that the two highest happened in Detroit, Michigan. Yeah, right. So, uh, but uh, is this the bad beat city? This is the first time the bad beat jackpot's been hit at the MGM Grand Detroit since June nineteenth, two thousand nineteen. Okay, staying with the bad beat theme of this uh, beat in the house segment. Uh, I normally don't do. Uh, online sites here but uh got to do it here gg poker the bad beat jackpot was not hit once not hit twice but five times over a weekend how the hell does that happen well i have the entire list here and suffice it to say it's an amazing list and the biggest one happened the fifth time okay it was like almost growing and growing and growing it was like uh, two bad beat jackpots happened in the space of 12 hours too you would think the last one would be the least you know it's it's bizarre well the first one uh was a, a winner of thirty five thousand dollars all right for losing the bad for losing against the if we're winning the bad beat but losing the hand okay um the four other players also won twenty eight hundred dollars at that table 12 hours later the same guy was involved in another bad beat jackpot. This time he won. He won 35000 Wow, okay. Uh, then another one happened. A straight flush versus a king high straight flush won, won $89,000 off a total jackpot of $144,000 jackpot. Then we had another one. Uh, where the winner of the hand saw their bankroll boosted by $27,000, while the players dealt into the hand walked away with 7000 each. Uh, then the last one. Um, the winner received a $352,000 <laughs> payout on the bad beat jackpot. All one weekend long. This is an incredible amount of money. Wow. Okay. Uh I, well, first of all, you know, it's kind of interesting that the bad beat jackpot kept growing. It's, uh, it's interesting. I, I don't normally yeah, see... I different mean, games and things like that? I, I'm not too familiar with GG Poker. 
I'm not either, but it's it's kind of interesting that the amount of money kept going up and up and up. I mean, I guess maybe as the weekend progressed, more people signed I guess on so, and yeah. applying. Yeah. But uh, it's the first time I'm dealing with GG Poker. I, I mean, I know they did some stuff with, um, I think they had some tournaments online, you know, for some of the other major things out there, some partnerships. But, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not too familiar with GG, but anyway, it was just such a unique occurrence, five times over the weekend. Uh, Play Sugar House is next up. In Pennsylvania, uh, Play Sugar House uh, made Christmas a whole lot merrier for a Reading area grandma who hit the mega jackpot on Divine Fortune. Oh, I love Divine Fortune. Forty cent bet. Okay. Won one hundred eighty-two thousand three hundred ninety-one. Wow. Okay. Um, according to uh, the release, the grandmother to seven and mom to four says she'll use the money to pay off her house and buy presents for her family. Oh, that's great. Uh, Rush Street Interactive has paid out the Divine Fortune Mega Jackpot to 98 winners in Pennsylvania on both platforms, Play Sugar House and Bet Rivers. Total progressive jackpot payout so far, $13,615,000. I like Divine Fortune. It's a good machine. It's fun to play. Uh, you know, it's absolutely great to play. That's one of my favorite ones, especially when you're playing online slots in New Jersey. I guess they had it in Pennsylvania, too. I, I think it'd be more fun if I won the yeah. $182,000 on a 40-cent bet, but 40 it's cent still bet. a fun game to play. Wow, 40-cent bet. Going out to Vegas with the El Cortez now. A visitor from Minnesota hit the jackpot at El Cortez, turning a $5 bet into a $77,000 jackpot on a dollar storm machine. And uh, the reason this is big news is in the month of November, the El Cortez awarded eight big jackpots. December, oh, I'm sorry, this is December. I'm sorry, this is uh, for the month of December. Wow, uh, we're not even done with December yet. No, we're halfway through December. They have eight big jackpots. Oh, wow. December 1st, player won $14,000 playing Kino. Okay. Uh, you won Kino. It's a, it's an, uh, it's a machine game. Uh, in December 2nd, $13,000 was won on Dragon Link. On December 3rd, a player won $18,000 on Wolf Run Kino. Lots of Kino. Uh, on December 6th, a player won $18,000 on U1 Kino. And another player won 10000 on U1 Kino. So two jackpots in one day. I have to hit the El Cortez just for the Kino, huh? And not, and not to be finished with December 6th. It must have been a very lucky day. A player also won 13000 on video poker. Wow, big day at El Cortez. So... Uh, Congratulations to all the winners in December for the El Cortez Casino and our last one of the week. We're going over to Michigan again. All right. end, we started in Michigan. We're going to end in Michigan. The Michigan Lottery. We seem to get a lot of Michigan lottery stories. Uh, Jeffrey Phillips, age 62 of Washington-Tawa, Wash, Washtenawa. Washtenaw. Uh, I'm totally Washtenaw. mispronouncing that. I can't speak. Washtenaw. Washtenaw County. Yeah. Uh, told Michigan Lottery officials the numbers on the winning Mega Millions ticket he bought from Polly's Country Market in Chelsea were the same numbers he has been playing every week for two years. He won a $2 million jackpot playing the same numbers for two years. I know people who do the lottery, they just keep their their ticket. You know, they run it through the machine and they, the guy gives them back their ticket. And I, I think uh, it on... just, you know, they're, they're where they choose their... Uh, their uh, numbers. Well, I think in some states they have the uh, cards where you can actually, you know, the gift cards where it has a set, uh, one set of numbers. Yeah. And you give them to people or you can get them yourself and you just keep playing the same numbers every day. It's already taken care of for you. Yeah. Well, uh, it, you, you can, I know, like I said, I know people who fill out their uh, sheet with their numbers and keep using that same sheet. Just the guy behind the counter just keeps giving it back to them. Yeah. You know, I still haven't seen this anywhere, but I wonder if there's been a study done to see whether or not. The hand-picked numbers versus the machine-picked numbers. Which one wins more? Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't have numbers. I mean, anytime I buy the lottery, I just, you know, give me a quick pick. I just know there are some people who are dead set against doing quick picks. They oh. love doing the filling out the little sheet before they hand it in and all that stuff. But if anyone's done a study like that, I'd like to see the results. Yeah, whether right. or not the quick picks are better in terms of winning percentage than the, uh, the hand-filled uh, sheet picks. Anyway, that's it for this week's Beat in the House segment. We are, are always happy to see the uh, press releases coming in to info at turnpikesportsradio.com, giving us the rundowns of the different jackpots around the country, internationally as well. 
Uh, so please keep them coming in. NFL picks are coming up next, so stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. We'll get back to the show in a few moments, but I just wanted to take some time and tell everyone about Bean Genius, the smart specialty coffee subscription service. Bean Genius sells freshly roasted coffee from some of the best independent coffee roasters in the country. They feature over 2,000 specialty coffee blends, all at your fingertips at BeanGenius.com. Here's how it works. Head on over to BeanGenius.com and take their palate profiler test to find out what coffee best fits your taste. Then select from a variety of subscription plans. Every subscription comes with free shipping, and delivery can even be scheduled for once or twice each month. And based upon your review of each coffee blend you try, Bean Genius actually learns your individual taste preferences and then suggests future coffee blends for you. And now you can get 10% off your Bean Genius subscription when you use our promo code PIKE at checkout. Bean Genius offers a variety of subscription plans to suit any coffee lover's needs. Subscribe with Bean Genius today and start enjoying some of the best tasting coffee around. And save 10% off your coffee plan with promo code PIKE. This week's Turnpike Sports Pro Pick segment is brought to you by Fubo Sportsbook. Get in the game with Fubo Sportsbook. Integrated with Fubo TV, Fubo Sportsbook is designed to meet the U.S. sports fans' growing demand for interactivity. You can use their Watching Now feature to view wagering content based upon what you're streaming on Fubo TV, even as you change the channel. And now new customers get a risk-free bet up to $1,000 plus a free month of Fubo TV when you sign up at FuboSportsbook.com with promo code WATCH. W-A-T-C-H. That's promo code WATCH when you sign up to get your first risk-free bet up to $1,000 at Fubo Sportsbook, plus a free month of Fubo TV. Sign up, then sync up to enjoy one of the most unique and personalized sports experiences in the market today. Watch, wager, and win with Fubo Sportsbook. Iowa only must be at least 21 years or old to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. New customers only. Problem gambler? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And welcome to week 16 of the... National COVID League, which yeah. seems to be moving games all around now. I think we're going to have that for the rest of the season. As we're taping this, there are still two more games to be played. We're on a Tuesday morning here using the Tuesday lines over at Fubo Sportsbook for the second week. Iowa only. Um, you sign up with the promo code WATCH. You get a risk-free bet up to 1000 plus one month of Fubo TV free, which, by the way, I am loving Fubo TV. Fubo TV is awesome. I love it. Uh, we were in uh, New England for a couple uh, weeks, and uh, we actually saw the Jets game both weeks. Twice. And I, I mean, that, that wasn't a great thing. I no, mean, it wasn't a pleasant <laughs> was, experience a, in terms of the know, game. W- but. Actually watching the game was uh, awesome, but seeing how the Jets played was just horrendous. But the uh, point is we watched the Jets game in New England. The quality of play by the Jets did not detract from the quality of Fubo TV I, as I love Fubo so, TV. Uh, no, it was great. And uh, I, I have been TV really enjoying shows, it. TV shows, movies, live sports, love it. And also, when we're up there, New York News. Yeah, yeah. Which shocking. was actually yeah, pretty cool. It was great. So, a uh, little bit of home. Exactly. Um, again, we're here in week 16 for the NFL. Uh, games have been impacted by COVID a lot. They're going to continue to be impacted by COVID, I think, for the rest of the season. This you is just got to be, yeah. Yeah. you just got to roll with your picks, people. You know, and just, just keep one of checking things. right before game time, and because yep. everything's changing. Uh, you know, uh, Vizen, which I listen to all the time, they now have a COVID tracker, so <laughs> which is important now for better. I think everyone's going to have to have oh, one of those boy. at some point. Yeah, this is tough. But again, uh, you know, uh, we're here in the pick segment. So, so our do. picks are take it what you will. This yeah. is our thought at the moment. Please check who has COVID. Please check the lines as the week goes on. Check the lines right before game time and see who's playing. Because, the, these uh, are, we're these flying are, blind almost. These are early week picks. Yep. And look lines, aheads. They call them look aheads. They're look aheads. And you know what? <laughs> the These lines will definitely change by the time I, these games roll guess. around. So, I don't uh, know. I do like the fact we had. What five out of seven days of football? Yeah, because of yeah, COVID. Yeah, 
I mean, that's that's a bright side looking at right there. But well, well here in the the uh, pick segment here, we do three games each as we've been doing all season long. We had a pretty good week last week. Both of us did. Yeah. yeah. Spreads and to- uh, spreads and totals only, no money lines. Um, let's recap what happened last week. Uh, last week I went three and zero. Wow! Congratulations! I went two and one. Uh, so. I have to admit, I got a better line than probably everybody else did with that Raiders game. I had Raiders plus six. Wow, that was great. And they won by by three, I think. Two. One. Is it? Or two? Wait, what was two. it? Two. It was two. It was two. Yeah. Yeah, it was 16-14. Uh, um, but, yeah, that was that was just a lucky, lucky pick on my part because – that spread went to the Browns. I that think was, was up and down. Yeah. That was absolutely up and down. People were waiting to see who was going to play and who wasn't and, going to play. And, and, I, and, and that I was know, just a mess. And I know some books canceled some bets because well, of what was going on. Yeah. And that you know what? That's a smart thing to do. That's another thing. Check check, check the rules of the house. You know, check to see um, what the um, the policy is for the sports book you're placing bets in. So, yeah, especially uh, everything's with different going so. on. So uh, again, three and zero, two and one. Uh, season to date, I'm still in the lead, twenty four, twenty and one. You are twenty two, twenty and three. Oh, okay. So we're close. Yeah, yeah your yeah. your two push your two extra pushes are separating us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we're going to be uh, talking about this week's games, and uh, this is probably where I'm going to go zero oh, and three. I'll do a mirror image probably. <laughs> we'll see. We'll I'm see. going against the uh, kind of what the rule of thumb regarding uh, f- picking. Uh, totals in the uh, COVID era, so uh, we'll see how I do in this one. Well, you went first last week. I okay. probably should let you go first this week because yeah, right. I had a great week, but yeah. now I'll go first this week. Okay. First game, Indianapolis Colts at the Arizona Cardinals. By the way, I took this one too. The Cardinals are min- minus two, uh, are two-point favorites over under a 49-and-a-half. Uh, Colts are coming into this Saturday night game. They're almost like on a mini buy here. They played on Thursday night, beat the Patriots. They're coming into Arizona, and they're facing an Arizona Cardinal team that is not playing well. No. And after a really good start to the year, I'm really surprised at how badly they're playing. Um, Colts have won three of their last four games overall. They're 4-0 and against the spread as a road team in their last four road games. Uh, Cardinals... Conversely, are one and three against the spread in their last four home games. One of those losses was to Carolina, which is a really bad team right now. Um, the Colts are two and one against the spread in their last three meetings, and they've always played the Cardinals tough. That's why I am going with the underdog Colts plus two. I'm taking this game too. I mean, you know, like you said, I'm Colts are been playing very very well i mean i i you did the what did you do three of the last four i did uh, five of their last six i guess it's just a matter of uh how, how far, far back you're, you how far go. back you're going um i i think this is one of those games that both teams are going to push themselves because it's important for both teams and I, i'm i'm thinking this one's going to be decided in the fourth quarter hey, hey let me tell you something I'm thinking this one might even go to overtime because I think both teams are kind of evenly matched regardless of how Arizona has been playing these last couple of weeks. They're still a very, very good team. 49 and a half. I'm thinking the over, which is a lot of people are saying, you know what, in this COVID era of football, you might not want to take the over. You want to take the under because teams might not be playing their best football. But, you know, I I think these teams are going to push each other. I'm taking the over forty nine and a half. I looked at that too. Yeah, I, it, I mean, I'm taking. I'm, you know, both these teams score. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. That's not a crazy thing to say. Yeah. Uh, my next game: Baltimore Ravens at Cincinnati oh, Bengals. No. Oh, we're having one of those weeks. Now. Bengals are favored by two and a half. The over under is forty four and a half. The Bengals are one and three against the spread in their last four home four games and didn't play well against the Broncos. As a matter of fact, I think Baltimore played much better in their loss to Green Bay than the Bengals looked in their win against Denver. Bengals looked horrible against Denver. Um, they, they actually probably shouldn't have even won that game, to be honest with you. Uh, first time in a couple of years that the Ravens are an underdog in this, in this matchup. And they are 3-1. and one, The Ravens are 3-1 and one against the spread in their last four meetings with the Bengals, 2-0 and oh against the spread in their last two in Cincinnati. I'm doing the Ravens plus 2.5. I took this game, too, but uh, I took the total again. Believe it or not, I took two overs this week. I I rarely do that, but here's my reasoning. 
A uh, huge game for the Ravens. It's even possible that Lamar Jackson will be able to play this week. Even though Tyler Huntley played great against the against the Green Bay Packers in their loss. This is what like pushed me to the over. Last time these two teams played on October 24th, the Bengals won 41 to 17 with Burrow throwing three touchdown passes. I mean, with the playoff implications of this game, it's it's huge. And uh, with the total only being 44 and a half, I mean, it, it's kind of low to me. I'd be very curious to see how this line moves during the week. But right now, it's low. So right now, I'm taking it. I'm hey. taking the over 44 and a half. You also don't even know if Lamar Jackson is going to be playing. Well, that's why I said it's quite possible he could play, but Tyler Huntley played great. Yeah. So we don't know. But. Either way, I think Baltimore Ravens can put some points on the board, as well as the Cincinnati Bengals. And and like I said, last time they played on October twenty fourth, it was forty one to seventeen, and with the Bengals winning. So uh, and also it's a Dece- lot of points December is the time of year Baltimore seems to put it all together. Anyway, sure. So. sure. Okay. My last game of the week: the Detroit Lions going oh. to visit the Atlanta Falcons. Oof. The Falcons are six point favorite. Actually, I looked at this game on Monday. If they were, the Falcons opened up at a four-point favorite. They are now a six-point favorite. The over-under, which is also very, very low here. It's very low. 43 and a half. Uh, what I find really surprising, looking at Detroit's uh, record over the last couple of weeks, Detroit is 5-1 and one against the spread over their last six games. And the Falcons are 2-4 uh, and four way, against Doug, the spread. The total's even worse than you think. It's 41 and a half. They dropped it even further? Well, I don't know. It's well, because uh, Goff. Goff got just uh, put into the Oh, wait, wait, wait. Protocol. Which one are you talking about? Detroit uh, Lions, Atlanta wait, Falcons. Wait, okay, wait, let me see. Uh, I'm looking at the points now. Well, let me go along with my analysis here anyway. Falcons are 2 They took and it four. off the board, by the way. Really? Oh, because of Goff. Yeah. Yeah, he just got put so, in there. Yeah, it's, I, so well, I, don't, I don't know what the total is now. So. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep with my pick here. Okay. Uh, if it changes something down the road, this is a COVID pick, I'll yeah, call it It's that. a COVID pick. Um, you got an asterisk yes. to it. Yeah, they have lock signs on the uh, total. Well, the Falcons are 2-4 and four against the spread in their last six overall. They're 0-3 oh against the spread in their last three home games. The Lions are 3-0 and oh against the spread against their last uh, three NFC opponents. And like I said, while that total before they took it yeah. off the board <laughs> was very low, I still am going to go with the trends with Detroit and do the underdog six uh, with the six points. My last game, I'm trying to figure if I ever uh, bet on them this year, but uh, I, I think I might have, but I don't know. My last game is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus the New York Jets, who are favored by two and a half with an over-under of 41 and a half. I mean, like I said, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think the Jets were ever favored this year. So yes, they I, were favored in week four. Really? Were they? Okay. And that's but, when they lost. But, you know, that's. But I'm, I'm going with them this week. I mean, I won last week betting against the Jaguars when they were blown out by the Houston Texans. And I actually think the Jets are a better team than the Houston Texans. Plus, you have a very bad Jacksonville Jaguar team playing in the ice cold Meadowlands. And I, I think the Jets will pull this one out. And with the spread at two and a half. The Jets can win by a field goal, and they cover. So uh, I'm taking the Jets and laying the points. I never thought I'd say that on this show, but I'm Especially taking the favorite year. Jets and laying the points. Well, let's do our COVID recap. Okay. Go ahead. All right. I am taking the over 49.5 points in the Colts-Cardinals game. I'm taking the over 44.5 points in the ravens Bengal game. And I'm taking the favorite New York Jets and laying the 2.5 points against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I'm doing the underdog uh, series of bets here. I'm doing the Colts plus 2 against the uh, Cardinals, the Ravens plus 2.5 against the Bengals, and Detroit. Uh, they may be the golfless Detroit Lions. Who knows? But... I'm going Detroit plus six, just riding the trends there. Uh, picks will be up on the blogs, TurnpikeSportsRadio.com. Click on the blog button, and you will find our picks there. Feel free to comment on them. Info at TurnpikeSportsRadio.com is our email address. Turnpike Sports and Turnpike Bets are our two Twitter handles. Facebook, we're Turnpike Sports, and Instagram is Turnpike Sports Radio uh, for that uh, social media outlet. That's it for our picks. The book report is next, so stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports.
Turnpike Sports Book Report. The Turnpike Sports Book Report is brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book. Available anywhere in New Jersey, BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E. Make your first wager of $20 or more and you'll get $100 in free bets. That's $100 in free bets when your first wager on Borgata Sports is $20 or more. Get into the action with BorgataSports.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And welcome to this week's Turnpike Sports Book Report, where we're going to be talking about the state and national reports. And boy, do we got a lot of those to talk about. We've got brand new states to talk about. We've got some records to talk about. We're constantly talking about records. Lots of great numbers. Uh, we've got legislation. We've got deals to talk about. One interesting deal that is... Uh, Kind of uh, first time this sport has been involved in a sports betting deal. I'm just teasing that for a little bit. I, I don't want to give too much away, but does it involve Bally's? Yes, it does. Okay, okay, I know what you're talking about now. Um, and also, you know, we have a whole bunch of launches. It, was, right. it was a really busy week uh, this past week here. We're taping even this a little earlier than we normally do because there was so much to talk about. Um, but in terms of State and national numbers. We had a whole bunch of records set. Um, let's start with, as always, New Jersey. New Jersey became the very first state to generate $100 million in sports betting revenue for the month. Wow, that's great. Uh, we're not talking about handle. We're talking about once all revenue. the bills are paid and everything, what, what's left over? It's 100 Hundred million. Hundred and fourteen point seven eight eight million to be wow. exact. That's the total revenue. That's online and also uh retail together. It it's just been uh incredible. Last couple of months for New Jersey, they've had three straight months of one billion plus in sports betting handle. Yeah, I, I, I'm very curious to see uh, how New Jersey does once New York jumps into the mobile sports betting arena. But uh, these numbers are great for Jersey. Well, again, New York... Constantly great. New York may or may not be a threat depending upon that tax rate. A lot of the uh, you know, there, there are places out there saying that the operators are going to bring uh, betters to New Jersey or even direct promos for the yeah, New Jersey we're, side. Yeah, we're going to have more on that issue uh Soon, you know, yes. we have a, a great interview coming, coming up, up with uh, Mark Saxon, who writes for nyonlinegambling.com dot com and Better Collective, and uh, he wrote a great article about it. And, uh, and we're gonna talk to him very, very soon. That'll air a couple of weeks in, on Turnpike Sports yeah. here. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, right now, New Jersey year to date. Now, I just said New Jersey had three straight months of one billion plus handle handle. Yeah. Uh, the year-to-date handle for the state is nine point seven billion dollars. I mean, Jersey's going to hit that's ten. That's the eleven right? months. Yeah, J- I mean, Jersey's going to hit ten. Unless 10 something drastic happens in terms of sports betting uh, industry, in terms of New Jersey, three hundred million is not a not uh, you know that's not a lot to, for them to do. I mean, they've been doing a billion. Uh, billion plus for the last three months uh, september October, in, in a couple of weeks that'll be the big story new jersey hit 10 billion dollars well, it's already handle. the big story it, it is but yeah but it, it has to hit officially you can't really celebrate until it hits officially no no so. you, it's it's but it's pretty much a done deal the oh, way yeah. new jersey's oh, yeah. trending oh, you know yeah. if you if you just follow the trends and uh interesting note for the total revenue uh the meadowlands license generated more than half of that state revenue Wow, sixty-four point four million of the hundred and fourteen million was generated by the Meadowlands, you know, the retail book there plus the licenses they have. Mm-hmm. So, uh, kind of interesting to see how which operator is performing extremely well versus some of the other ones. Again, online is king in uh, New Jersey. So oh, it's, especially in the coming months because it's winter. Who wants to go out? You know. Well, on a, on a Tuesday night, you wait. You gonna run out to the uh, sports book to place a bet? No, you are gonna sit in your couch right in front of your fireplace and uh, p- uh, place your bet on your phone. Well, here the the uh, a good indication is a brand new state that just came on in Connecticut. Okay. Now Connecticut is just had their second full month 
of sports betting, just as a comparison to New Jersey. They didn't set any records. I mean, everything they do is a state record now. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, everything is so new, everything's a record. They, they blew by their, their handle. Uh, they had a handle of $131 million in November. That's 140% more than what they had the previous month, which was they only had a half a month sure. there. But uh, in terms of the actual online versus um, retail, uh, Connecticut was about 97% online. Sure, absolutely. And that's kind of where a lot of states are trending. I mean, if it's an, if it's not an online only jurisdiction, you know, they're going to have a high online handle. And I think New Jersey, I think everyone calls it the New Jersey model now. Uh, I think that's kind of where everybody wants their state to be heading, uh, except for places like Nevada, Mississippi, which seem to be very slow in getting, you know, some of the online registration uh, setups. You know, removed. I gotta tell you, in terms of Connecticut, they're marketing the hell out of it in New England through billboards. Boy, you drive through uh, Connecticut, you drive through a, a, a near New York, near the border, you, even in Massachusetts, there's a lot of billboards saying talking about sports betting. I saw one the other day on the expressway in Massachusetts, and uh, I think that was Fanduel. Uh, yeah, what is that? Is that um, Fandle is Mohican Sun, Mohican Sun and DraftKings is, Fox is Foxwoods. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But uh, staying with New Jersey or going back to New Jersey for a little bit, everyone you know talks about the online casino industry there uh, being the uh, key to the casino industry overall in the state. Um, sports betting is catching up. And uh, New Jersey's online casinos year to date, uh, 1.2 billion in revenue compared to now 757 million dollars in revenue from online and retail sports betting. They're starting to even up here. Sure, sure. And it's it's going to be interesting to see well, exactly you know, what happens in December if we see another 100 million dollar revenue month for sports betting in December. Well, that's the one thing that's kind of like the X factor for me when we're talking about New Jersey and how New York is going to affect the sports betting numbers. One thing New Jersey has that New York doesn't, and it doesn't look like they're going to have any time soon, is online casinos and online poker. You know, if you want to, if you're in New York City and you want to play online casinos or online poker, you got to come over to New Jersey. And while you're in New Jersey, you might as well place all your sports bets here. So it, it's one of those things where you know that may help. What, what do they call the George Washington Bridge? The George Washington Bridge Casino. Yep. The, basically, everybody so, goes onto that you know, bridge. I think even Tappan Zee, or what is it now, the Mario Cuomo Bridge, or whatever you want to call it, the the one that, you know, Tappan Zee Bridge. I'm going to call it Tappan Zee. That's also a place where you can actually go and just uh, start looking at getting close to New Jersey, placing bets. I mean, you still got a little ways to go to get into New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, um, that that is, you know, that's a gateway to another online betting area because you just go right sure, to the New Jersey sure. line. So uh, we'll see exactly where New Jersey ends up with December. It should do the ten billion dollar for the year. Yep. I wonder if it's going to be another billion dollar month. We'll see for handle anyway. We'll see. But uh, it would be nice to see a hundred million dollar revenue month again. Sure. I don't know if they're going to do it, but we'll see. Uh, a couple other states set their state records. Uh, Indiana, Iowa, both set state records. D.C. set a jurisdiction record. I can't call it a state. Uh, Michigan online sports betting also set records. So are these I'm, all handles? These are these are all variety of things. Oh, oh, oh just general records in terms of <laughs> in, in terms of sports betting. In terms in of state. Indiana and Iowa, they both set total handle records, online handle records, and revenue records for the month of November. Wow, okay, both states. Um, uh, let's see, Iowa. I saw an interesting stat, and uh, it was kind of funny to read this. Iowa residents are betting an average of $9.6 million a day in the state. Ooh, wow. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I, I thought it was kind of a, yeah. uh, you know. You know, a, I never think of it in terms like that. I wonder how that stacks up to the other states in the union. Well, I think, I think New Jersey blows by that one. I think well, Pennsylvania uh, blows by that Nevada one. Nevada and well, Nevada, yeah. Michigan probably. And well, something. Michigan set an online handle record. Oh, there you go. All right. Uh uh, let's see, online handle record of $473.8 uh, $473. million and also an adjusted gross revenue record of $34.5 million. Boy, lots of records. Uh, Michigan also became the fifth state to pass the $500 million mark in terms of monthly total handle. Hmm, okay. They joined New Jersey, Nevada, 
Illinois, Pennsylvania. Okay. There are the there are only five states that have passed five hundred million dollar in monthly total handle for uh, for the country here. Uh, Iowa is on the verge of going to the two billion dollar mark in handle for the year already, huh? Through its first eleven months. Yeah, boy. For through the first eleven months in two thousand twenty one. Iowa sportsbooks have uh, brought in $1.8 billion in handle. Oh, jeez. $778 million over the last three months. Iowa's getting to be a little powerhouse there, huh? Well, well again, it's, huh? I think it's... Wait, did ma- that sound condescending or what? Yeah, I know. But, a little bit, but, uh, but uh, again, it's a no, matter of... No, but good of, for Iowa. I think it's a matter of college football and pro football, because I think oh, sure. Iowa's college football market is huge. I mean, that's that's college football there. That's well, I, I think they're, so than a lot of they're going to do well in March with March Madness, I think, Yeah, too. I think so. Yeah, I absolutely. Think so. Um, Louisiana reported their first numbers for okay. uh, for November. I mean, they, they weren't operating... You know, a hundred percent, but they had. Um, hey, it's their first report. Report twenty six right? point seven million dollars in handle for the month of November. Net revenue of about five point six eight million. Only two of their eight sports books were operating for the entire month. Well, you know, look, it's the first month. It's. I mean, I think they're pretty good numbers for the first month. So oh, I think congratulations so too. to Louisiana. And uh, as I mentioned, DC uh, set a total gross gaming record revenue of four point four million dollars. Uh, again, it was split between the, and I, I'm really, you know, I, I, it's very confusing to me why they do it this way. Everyone reports the numbers as the gambit numbers and the non-gambit numbers. Okay. Uh, I mean, it, it, I, I guess it's just a matter of, you know, the way they want to say things or phrase them. But, you know, splitting between those two, they always do that. And what they have here is for the month of November... The revenue split was three point three five nine million for non gambit operators. That's the revenue compared to Gambit's one point oh seven six million dollars in revenue. So again, I think they they like pointing out the fact that Gambit's underperforming. Oh, is that? I, is I, I that don't the know thing? why they. I don't <laughs> know why they want to do that. Okay. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a interesting thing. But we have a whole bunch of new marks being set. Again, looking forward to seeing what December brings. But sure. again, we also got to wait for Nevada, Pennsylvania. There's probably a couple others coming in that you know that we Arizona still has yet to report De- their numbers. You know, December should be great because Christmas Day. There's so much sports on Christmas Day. First off, the NBA. It's, a, it's such a great weekend for NBA, and it's going to be a great weekend for NFL football. And you know, everyone is really getting into the. The playoff picture is getting more into focus, and so you know that it should be an amazing weekend. Oh, I'm looking forward to Christmas Day. I love oh, NBA yeah. betting. Oh, so, yeah. I, yeah, I love that more than NFL. Going to do a Christmas uh, parlay. Or I something always like? do. You always the last do? couple okay. years, I've done a Christmas Day parlay. It's such a tradition. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I do all the games. I do a parlay made up of all the games, all money line. I, I'm not doing the spreads, but a uh, couple of uh, launches to talk about. Another busy week of launches here. Um, I'll go through these really quick here. Points Bet went live in Virginia last week. That is their eighth state. They are now operational in Virginia, New Jersey, Iowa, Indiana, Illinois, Colorado, Michigan, and West Virginia. Um, Ballybet went live in Indiana. Okay. That They are now the 13th betting app in the state. Uh, let's see. We also have, I'm going through some of these launches that I have written down here. In Washington State, we had the Snoqualmie tribe in Washington. Whoa. I'm pronouncing Snoqu- that where, where, completely I, wrong. And I how, how is it spelled? S n o q a S n o q u a l m i e. You know, it's a difficult word when you have trouble spelling it and you're looking at it. Yes, and that's also in conjunction with IGT. Okay. Uh, Maryland, we had a whole slew of them launching. We had Caesars launching at Horseshoe. We had. Um, Ocean Downs launching, and also this week, uh, as we're taping this, but you know, this week, uh, Hollywood Perryville, it will be launching, and that is the first branded barstool branded sports book for the state. Okay, uh, Bet three sixty five got uh, approval to operate in Colorado. Yahoo Sportsbook said they're going to be launching soon in Louisiana. That's Yahoo Sportsbook powered by BetMGM. Okay, basically, it's BetMGM. 
Uh, Arizona, Caesar Sportsbook opened at Harris Akchin. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, 888 in New Jersey has ceased operations. 888 Sport. Yeah, but it it also means what what are they partnered with? They're, they're SI Sportsbook. At some point, they're going to yeah, probably Sports re-enter. Illustrated Sportsbook. Yeah. So I, I'm assuming they're just going to open up Sports Illustrated Sportsbook in New Jersey. Yeah, I, 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 think you're, I think you're going to see them come back in the state yeah. as SI Sportsbook. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, one of the conferences we uh, were uh, uh, we attended the East Coast Gaming Congress, SI Sportsbook was their sponsor. Yeah, yeah. So and uh, that was in New Jersey. That, that was, was in, in Atlantic City. So that's what I'm saying. At some point, we're going to be seeing uh, them come into come back into New Jersey. Not as, the fact that you know their physical presence of their people were in Atlantic City. I mean, I, we're not making that huge leap that they didn't announce anything. They're going to New Jersey, but you know. Yeah, put two it's and a leap two together. Of logic. Yeah, it's yeah. A, you know. A um, couple of uh, deals to report on, and I teased it at the beginning. We have the very first. Oh, is this the Bally's one? Fishing deal. Fishing. I got to tell you, um, I, I saw this, and uh, I have to check the sports books. I don't, I don't know if there's a. Usually, the online sports books, they have all the sports that you can bet on on one of the sides or across the top, and I, I have to look for fishing. I have never thought to look for fishing. No, no, I haven't I haven't seen fishing yet, but I will look for it. But Bally's announced a deal, and I want to get the league right, with Major League Fishing. Major League Fishing. Designating Bally's as Major League Fishing's exclusive sports betting, daily fantasy sports, and free-to-play partner for all their tournaments. That's got to be a tough sport to bet on. I mean, what, do you bet on the poundage of the if that's even a word, of the fish caught, do you, the quantity of the fish caught? I mean, what are some of the props that you can go with? And and is it a point system like NASCAR? How 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 is fishing work? I, I got to check actually, that I've out. actually watched Bassmasters. I don't know if that's part of uh, the Major League Fishing. I, yeah, I don't know if that's series, competition fishing. But uh, it is competition. It fishing. is really. Bass I didn't Masters. know Bassmasters. It's, it's points. Oh, you get points oh for, so it is kind of like NASCAR. Yeah, exactly. Like kind of a, okay, all but right. But you're you're also getting free to play games. You're getting uh, fantasy. I'm gonna do Fa- the I'm gonna do the free to play games because I got to learn how to do it. That's I, the great I'm thing very, about free to play. I'm very games. curious to see how the fantasy works. Because, fantasy fishing, huh? Because according to the release, you're going to be able to pick a team of fishermen. Okay. And you compete see, against other teams. That's what I was questioning. Are there teams of fishermen? I don't want to use fishermen. I mean, is it fisher, fisher pe- persons? Fisher persons? I'm, I, don't, I don't. I don't. Is are there teams? Are there individuals doing this? Can you bet on teams? And can you bet on individuals? I'm very curious about this. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. And, and also, they're going to be able to the uh, Bally Sports Networks and also the Bally Bet app. Hey, they're hey, going to be for, streaming stuff. I'll, 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 I'll tr- take a look at I'll, it. I'll even try it. What the hell? Uh, yeah. Bet Rivers announced a deal in, in Chicago with the daughter of Walter Payton, Brittany mm-hmm. Payton. Great. She will be the brand ambassador for Illinois and Arizona. Okay. Uh, Genius Sports. I'm looking forward to this because uh, – it I've, I've been hearing so much stuff about the Canadian Football League. They just did a yes, data deal with CFL. the Canadian Football League. Yes. So uh, the CFL has always said they have been very interested in the sports betting area and the markets and all that. So Genius Sports comes in, does a deal for a da- for da- exclusive data rights to CFL games. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see that. I mean, um, I don't even know when their season starts. I don't know. Every, every time I turn on ESPN <laughs> or one of the other sports channels, there's a Grey Cup being played. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know if it's a previous Grey Cup, or, but it's another sport i got to pay more attention to be because a, with this deal, it's all of North American sports betting. We're going to start seeing a lot more Canadian football on the sports books in the United States. Great. You know, there's going to be a lot of, of football betting coming up because isn't the USFL starting again and things like that? USFL starting again, and if I remember the trademark filings correctly – uh, all the teams have trademarks that include betting. Okay, there you go. So uh, keep an eye out for that one. I, I it's I know Fox some owns, spring football. I know Fox nice. owns USFL. So I'm assuming Fox Bet yeah, is Fox automatically going to be included guess it'll be in all involved that. in it. So yep. uh, you know, there's going to be some deals announced for that. We've got uh, moving on here. We got BetMGM doing a three year extension with the PGA Tour. So uh, congratulations on those parties. They're going to be doing. A lot more together in terms of uh, golf betting. Great. Um, 
we just had, we just had Betway on the uh, Richard Hassan and John Collins from Betway on yes. the show on Turnpike Sports. Um, they just did their four thousandth race sponsorship in the in the UK. Wow, in Ireland, oh. four thousand races. They they are huge in Europe. Oh, they're, they're getting bigger and bigger. Oh, and they're get, yeah, they're getting bigger and bigger. They also announced their one thousandth sponsored race at Newcastle only. So they've done a thousand races at Newcastle. 4,000 races in the U.K. and Ireland. That's a huge benchmark. I know, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I, you know, we see all these sponsorship deals. I don't think any sports book has gotten close to them yet in terms of that number. Yeah, it, it, like I said, they're huge in Europe. So, And Europe, I, I think, is light years ahead of the U.S. in sports betting. So Betway certainly knows what they're doing, and they've had a lot of experience. And, you know, it's like I said, I, I saw them one time watching a hockey game, and I haven't stopped hearing about them since. So uh, good for Betway. No, Betway's grown fast in the United States as well as overall. So uh, shall we end on some legislation? Uh, sure. Some exciting legislation. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Chicago City Council has approved the uh, the lifting of the ban for sports books to be in the city's stadiums. Great, with an additional two percent tax. So it's about a nineteen percent tax for a sports book in the city of Chicago. Uh, It'll be worth it. Still gonna, better than New York. It opens the fields. No pun intended. There, Soldier Field, Wrigley Field, Guaranteed Rate Field, the United Center, and Wind Trust Arena. Uh, Wintrust Arena is kind of interesting. Uh, they're the ones that are owned and operated by the M- WNBA team. Mm-hmm. It'll be one of the first women-owned sports books Great. in Illinois. Great. Um, we had uh, Ohio. We're still waiting for uh, the governor to sign the bill. By the time this airs, he may have already signed it. Yeah, yeah. My God. Uh, it was well, it's tra- taking so long. It was transmitted to his office. Last reports I've I've seen as we're taping this. No, no word on when he's going to sign. He's got about ten days to sign it, something like that. Okay. But uh, according to the uh, lawmakers there, it's going to include in-state college betting. Okay. So you're going to have the opposite of Jersey. Jersey yeah. bans all in-state collegiate betting. Well, that failed in a uh, referendum. Apparently, the voters didn't want it. So yeah. It's... So we so we couldn't bet on the Army Navy game because it was a collegiate event happening in New Jersey. So uh it was off our sports books. Well, just so you know, more money was riding on the Army Navy game than any other event on a Saturday featuring a full slate of NBA, NHL, and college basketball games and a UFC card. Well, it's such a big event. Well, Although again, we couldn't bet on it in New Jersey because we have that crazy rule. Well, again, what are you going to do? I mean, yeah. it's really the only bet that really is solid is do the under. I wonder when that's Oh, yeah, what, 16, 16 years in a row, row yep. they hit the under? And the under was, this year was about, what, 34, 33 in some books. And it, still, they they? They hit the, still they hit the under. I, I'm curious to see what next year's over-under is going to be. And last but not least, let's talk about a little bit of New York here. Uh, we're still waiting on... Um, you know, online or mobile betting to start in yeah. New York. And while that's happening and things are in motion for that, um, we're seeing some new legislation filed that would actually already expand the market. Yeah, I mean, it it hasn't even, you know, really hit full stride yet in New York, and all of a sudden there's legislation to really expand it. We have Bill A-8538 introduced by New York Assemblyman J. Gary Pretlow. Okay. To allow... OTBs and pro sports venues to have mobile betting kiosks and also to expand New York's mobile betting options to include fixed odds horse wagering. So right off the bat, we're seeing an expansion of a market that is anticipating the launch of a market. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I I mean, look, I mean, I'm sure they're going to do this. I mean, it it just seems logical. You know, if you're going to have mobile sport, look, let's be honest about the kiosks in the uh, sport uh, sport arenas. You have your phone. You can bet. You can bet in the sports arenas. But now you're just putting a kiosk in there. So it's really, I mean, not having kiosks doesn't prevent people from betting in the sports stadiums. I'm going to be very curious to see. In sports in the New York arenas, will they block other sports books if if they don't have a deal with them? Uh, who knows? I don't I know. Mean, there's software out there to block stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I'm wondering if that's going to be kind of a key thing for some of these arenas. I mean, if you walk into the Garden, the Garden 
you know, they already have a deal, I think, with Caesars and BetMGM. If you walk in there with a uh, non of the none of none of either of those, will you be able to use it? You know, there might be, you know, handshake agreement saying, hey, look, we're not going to do that if you don't do that with ours. So, yeah, I, I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, at some point. Yeah, I think yeah. they're going to be a wink and a nod. And, yeah, go they're, they're all going to be like that yeah. probably. Well, that's it for this week's Turnpike Sports book report. Keep those press releases coming in. Info at TurnpikeSportsRadio.com. Don't forget, if you're watching us on the television, we have a uh, our news ticker going with uh, additional stories that we didn't touch here. And also... The print version of the book report will be coming out after this episode airs. That has even more stories that we didn't talk about. So uh, please check it out, TurnpikeSportsRadio.com. Click on the blog button there, and you'll see the print book report up and ready for your review. And that'll do it for us this week. We'll see you next time on the Turnpike.